Hey there, everybody. Welcome back, and I uh, hope everybody's getting ready to have a great weekend here. Um, today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Where we're not just going to be looking at the core components of FSX Steam Edition, but we're also going to be talking about what makes it different from regular boxed FSX. Now, I know that there's been some controversy out there in the community about whether or not a lot of the changes in FSX Steam Edition are just some sort of placebo effect or whether they're material or not. Um, there's also been a lot of controversy um, on the other side saying that FSX Steam Edition is the future of flight simulation, at least until we get a 64-bit solution. So we're going to be talking about both those things uh, right now. We're going to be showing some examples of them, um, and we'll talk about what uh, members of the community have also shared in terms of their feedback on um, what FSX Steam Edition really is. So hopefully, look to set the record straight today. I know that some of my other videos I've shown some great tech demonstrations of what makes FSX Steam Edition different. But we're going to talk about um, you know uh, more than just performance. We're going to talk about uh, the broader FSX Steam Edition platform, the platform, uh, the ecosystem, etc., and uh, what the future of uh, FSX Steam Edition looks like. So, first of all, we're going to go ahead and get off the ground, and we'll uh, have some time to talk today. I just want to share with you guys real quickly, as I always do, what the settings are that we'll be using today. So, as you guys can see, really nothing's changed from my previous videos. DirectX 10, um, 2560 by 1440, uh, anisotropic uh, filtering anti-aliasing aircraft is on the ultra high setting scenery is all maxed out with the exception of mesh resolution and water effects because I want to avoid uh, uh, terrain anomalies and uh, direct extent anomalies scenery complexity extremely dense autogen ex uh, density extremely dense <clears throat> special effects detail high Weather, cloud draw distance at 90, natural visualization, detailed clouds all maxed out, and traffic's at 40. 20 for GA, max airport, vehicle density, ships and fares 20 and 20, and we are using uh, My Traffic 2013 along with uh, um, FSDT's GSX. And uh, we'll be flying, uh, you'll be seeing three airports today. And the three airports you'll be seeing will be KSNA, the new KSNA um, that was uh, recently released. You'll also be seeing um, KPSB, which is also a relatively new airport um, from uh, Orbix. And then also here where we are right now is 29 Palms um, KNTP, I believe is the uh, um, ICAO code, uh, which is 29 Palms. So it's 29 Palms by 29 Palms. Um, and... Uh, as you can see, you know, so far, just sitting here on the ground, frames are kind of jumping around. We have some pretty intense weather that's going on um, up there, but frames are amazing right now. I mean, there are times when frames are peaking out at over 100 frames per second. You can see right now they're hovering somewhere around 70, 80, and kind of going up and down. This is a relative, uh, right now they jumped up to like 126, 130. Um, but this is a relatively <clears throat> simple airport. There's a lot of uh, autogen here on the ground, but you can see performance is absolutely off the charts, um, even with those crazy settings. So, Looks like we're going to be having a great flight. Um, you can see it's not the nicest weather, so we're going to be kind of skimming the uh, the, the earth here um, so we can stay out of the clouds uh, until we get to KPSP, um, where we're really going to have no choice but to uh, climb over those mountains. Um, so, uh, cool. Let's go ahead and get the party started. So, we'll do a quick run up here. And we'll go ahead and get this uh, bad boy started up. I'm just going to auto start her uh, just for simplicity's sake. And uh, for those of you guys who did not see uh, my previous video, this is the uh, Real Air Duke Turbine uh, version 2. So absolutely phenomenal aircraft. Been spending some more time with it. And, uh, you know, one of the best aircraft, uh, well, definitely the best non-tube liner aircraft I have, hands down. Absolutely love this bird. And uh, if you guys were looking for um, uh, something to kind of build some prop proficiency on, especially on the turbo side, um, I'm sorry, on the turbine side and the dually side, uh, this is a great aircraft. So go ahead and throw our uh, verter on, get our avionics cranked up here. And uh, GPS, we'll go ahead and take a notch of flaps now. And uh, open up our oil doors because it's hot desert kind of weird sauna thing going on. 29 Palms, by the way, is a great developer. They actually used to develop some sceneries, I believe, for Orbix, and you can see they have their own kind of people flow animations going on here. Uh, Orbix has not really figured out how to... Uh, there's another guy over here. Oh, there he is. He's hiding behind that uh, Cessna. Um, so, alright. Let's go ahead and get the party started. And, uh, so we'll start talking about... Let me put her into, uh, idle just for our taxi so we'll go ahead and start 
talking about um, actually something that you see right here at this airport, which is performance. So with the latest Dovetail patch, um, they did say that if you're not using V-Sync, you will see up to, now that's up to, a 10% increase in performance. Now, I have to say that, um, at least on my system, I have not seen a massive jump in performance. However, what I have seen is a great amount of stability. Um, so, uh, I should say frame rate stability, so smoothness. You know, I have to say, you know, I've been using Flight Simulator X for... Uh, Avidly, I can say the last five years. I mean, I bought it pretty much on release day, but I didn't use it for the first couple of years. Um, and uh, for the last five, I've been using it very, very, very avidly. I mean, it's been nonstop. My virtual airline, my newest virtual airline, just in the last year and a half or so, I've you know racked up about 1,800 hours of them over across about 200 legs. My VA before that, I racked up somewhere like 2,700 air, uh, um, hours. So. I spend a lot of time in that simulator, and I love it to death. Obviously, I mean, I have X, I have uh, not X plane, but P3D as well, and um, you know, I always come back to Flight Simulator. So, be very clear. I want to be very clear that you know, I fully understand how FSX performs, and I have been using it for long enough that I know all its tweaks, I know its nuances, I know its do's and its don'ts, and I have to say. I've never experienced smoothness like I have in FSX Steam Edition. Whether I'm flying a larger aircraft like my Quality Wing 757, very soon PMDG will be coming out with their 777 installer and afterwards their 737 installer, um, and I'll be doing some videos on that as well. But um, you know, even on my more you know frame rate demanding aircraft, um, uh, such as my Quality Wing 757 or uh, you know, more complex, smaller aircraft like this, or some of my um, Coronado aircraft. You know, I have to say, um, it is a smoother sim. You get less stutters, you get better performance. And when you look at the change log, which we'll be going in the change log a little bit later, you know, they've done a lot of things to kind of the core of the simulation um, that. I'm assuming is 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 uh, helped by the fact that they have a new compiler, the VS 2013, the Visual Studio 2013 um, compiler, where they've really been able to smooth out a lot of the performance issues that um, we've been plagued by the last uh, eight years um, with. Uh, regular FSX. So, um, without a doubt, there are performance enhancements, and we'll look at some of those today. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take this back down to low idle. And... Uh, we're looking good, so we'll go ahead and turn on our landing lights and our strobes and our beacon as well. And uh, we'll take the runway. We're going to be, uh, right now, it looks like our cloud cover is around 6,000 feet, so we'll take an initial cruise of 6,000. And I'm just going to um, continue here uh, on the takeoff. A little bit quirky getting this thing stable after that turn. Alright, here we go. We're looking for about 99% NG and 100 knots, 105 knots. Trying to keep her steady in these winds. There's some nasty crosswinds going on. And here we go. We're off. And uh, go ahead and put the gear up now. Look for the gear up. Shake animation. There she is. All right, we're right at 120 knots, which is what I like to climb at. And you guys can see we're pretty much right on the money at 99 NG. So. Uh, we're going to start climbing at around, uh, f uh, we'll do 4,000 feet for right now, 4,000 feet per minute, and uh, we're going up to 5,000, I'm sorry, 6,000. And I'm going to bring our climb down to uh, 2,000, and I'll bring our power back as well. I'm actually going to bring back um, our props just a tad bit, just to keep our RPMs nice and stable. We want to keep our ITT um, under control as well. Uh, make sure that doesn't hit the red. Our, our prop RPM, it's pretty hard to make hit the red, but our ITT and our torque needs to stay under control. So, um, alrighty, we'll do flaps up now. Alright, so... You know, going back to the performance discussion, you know, stutters, freezes, frame rate consistency, um, you know, texture popping, um, you know, all these things have really, really been improved. And I'll um, go real quickly into the uh, Steam overlay here, and we'll look at the change log that um, allows those things to um, really come to fruition. So, 
you know, as we look at the change log here, uh, let me see if it's here. So, those are the notes clarification. Let's go on over to the discussions. And let's see, new update. Okay, so in the most recent update, you guys see um, some of these improvements right here. So, increase the vertex and index buffer handling and a few other things. Think about a 10% frame rate improvement as long as V6 is disabled. You also see here um, that uh, they changed the default value, the max per frame texture uploads to decrease time for high quality terrain textures to appear. Now, this is another really big one for me. You know, as I simmed before, and you guys can actually uh, probably see it um, if you look at even my old YouTube videos, which we can go to here. Um, you know, you guys can definitely see where, um, you know, if you're watching some people's videos, whether it be my videos or some other videos that are out there, you'll see that uh, there are cases where um, there are uh, there's texture popping. Um, I think even in, in Frugal's, one of Frugal's latest videos um, where he's looking at this exact same aircraft, um, he has some cases of texture popping when he gets close to uh, KSNA, and I'll show you guys this real quickly. And, um, you know, it's, it's just something that we it's something that um, we've just kind of come to accept in the flight simulation community. But, uh, oh great, we got an ad. Um, but, uh, you know, it's absolutely game-changing when you're flying, let's say, in a fast military aircraft or when you're entering, um, you know, highly dense autogen intensive areas or photoreal areas, and you can, um, you know, look around your aircraft, pan around your aircraft, and do all that without having um, texture popping. It's absolutely amazing. So, um, you know, if you look here, I think it's going to happen any minute here. Um, he's going to make this turn, and then if you look down there at the ground, you're going to see the ground kind of turn like black or gray or something like that. And that's just, you know, something that we've all come to accept. Well, I'm willing to bet that as you watch today's video, you won't see that, how it turned all black and stuff. Um, it happens in, in one of my previous videos. Um, and, uh, you know, as you look around at various FSX videos, you'll see it. Um, but they've really, really been able to minimize that. And, you know, although it's nothing that's going to, you know, fundamentally completely change your simi experience, it goes to show you that there are some things that are just more than placebo effects. In fact, we're going to be flying into that airport KSNA, and you'll also, um, you know, notice that we don't get that popping there as well. That popping also applies not only to high detailed ground scenery, but also to the sky as well. Because sometimes if you look up, in fact you see it in one of my videos when, when Steam Edition first released before they had this patch, um, you know, if you look up at the sky sometimes when you're using like Rex textures, uh, you'll see um, sometimes the sky will turn kind of gray as well and you'll get that sky texture popping and of course it happens with clouds as well. So it's really, really great. Um, the other, uh, and that's the update. I don't know if they still have the change log here from when they first released it, but anyways, um, you'll see in the change log they have some other performance enhancements that are out there as well um, uh, in the way that, uh, you know, they manage um, texture cache releasing, um, which reduces, uh, you know, vast usage and things of the sort. So performance is definitely there. Try it for yourself. It's a more stable, more reliable, um, better performing sim overall, although you're not going to see a massive jump in frame rates. The consistency is definitely there. Now, speaking of those changes, you know, um, you know, one of the other reasons that, uh, and I guess I should say the second reason that um, FSX Steam Edition is better is its stability. So it has built-in UI automation core, right? It has, um, you know, various bug fixes here and there to help increase the stability of the sim. High mem fixes there by default. And, you know, as you look at the change logs, not only from release day, but also from this patch, you see that there are multiple stability and bug fixes in there that really, really keep this sim from crashing anywhere near as much as a, you know, even very aggressively tweaked um, FSX uh, box edition would. With that said, there's more than just the, the, the stability that exists today. We also have to recognize that, you know, they have updated SIM connects. They have the latest versions of SIM connects. You get less crashes, less errors, and, um, you know, you actually have a way of reporting those bugs or reporting any sort of stability issues that you have. Because right now, with Microsoft, obviously, they're not going to reply to your email if you have an issue with FSX Box Edition. But Dovetail is an active developer who's actively engaged in the development of this sim and, and actively engaged with the community. And you have a way of continuing to look um, at the stability of the simulator um, getting better and better. So the stability is there. Um, the third reason goes back to what I was just talking about with Dovetail.
and you know when you think about it this simulator um, is the only consumer product on the market because a lot of people are going to talk about p3d and p3d is great in its own in its own right I mean it looks really good great eye candy the thing is um, wildly wildly aggressive on vast I mean it uses so much vast it's not even funny you are guaranteed an OM with FSX or with um, p3d if you use settings anywhere near like the ones that I just showed you and you try this flight I can guarantee you will not be able to complete it but you know p3d let's be honest is not a consumer um, product it is a um, simulator that's intended for either academic use or professional use um, it is not a consumer product so when you look at the consumer product that's available out there um, you got x-plane you have uh, FSX uh, box edition which you can't even really get anymore and of course you have uh, FSX Steam edition the only one unless you're willing to go to x-plane that's still being constantly updated is FSX Steam edition so Dovetail, when you go on the Steam uh, community uh, site um, for FSX Steam Edition, um, and even when you look at some of the other um, developers' websites, you know, you go to Pe Pete Dawson's uh, forums, you'll see that there are Dovetail um, developers that are uh, in his forums listening to people's feedback and giving them solutions to the new SIM Connect clients or workarounds for FSU IPC compatibility, etc. So, you know, they are engaged with the community, it's constantly being updated. And um, Dovetail uh, not only has fixed some of these bugs, but has also made performance enhancements, and they um, are committing to continuing to do that. So it's a constantly updated simulator, um, which, of course, you just can't get with FSX. Now, alluding to one of the other points that I was just talking about, you know, reason number four is the fact that there's no more CD installs that are needed and CD keys or any of that stuff. And real quickly, we're coming up to, uh, to Palm Springs here, and we'll take a quick look around. Uh, you guys can see I'm using Rec Soft Clouds, and they are absolutely amazing. We take over this stupid overlay now. Um, they are absolutely amazing, I and mean, I love Soft Clouds so much. It's just uh, it's completely transformed my sim. Still waiting for ASN to get compatibility, but um, you know, once ASN comes along with their compatibility, and I get back some of those haze effects and, and things of the sort, um, we're gonna you know really really have a great looking simulator, and we're coming up to. Uh, is KPSP, which is, you know, once again, an absolutely amazing, amazing scenery, one of my favorites. And you can see the amount of autogen that's down there. I mean, it, this place is completely, completely saturated. Um, so we've got really nasty weather up above. We've got a lot of autogen down there at the bottom, really high quality terrain mesh. And she's chugging along um, at a very happy frame rate um, and with great stability. Now we're coming up here, so uh, we're going to start our climb. Let me give it a little bit more power. And we're going to start our climb on up to, uh, we'll say, 10,000 feet. And we're going to give it a vertical speed of uh, 3,000 just to be safe because we got to get ourselves up and over those mountains before we get ourselves killed. Um, actually, we'll go, uh, go 11,000. Um, so, uh, control this climb here. Alright, she's looking good. So, um, yeah, so uh, going back to that point, um, point number four is that, you know, there's no more CD installs needed. I still have my box edition sitting around, and, you know, I dread the day that if I were to ever scratch one of those CDs or, um, or uh, lose one of them. So um, I actually backed mine up. I created an ISO of my um, old CD keys, and then I have my, I'm sorry, of my old CDs, and then I have uh, uh, my... Um, CD key backed up on my computer as well as of course I have the physical box that also has my CD key in it as well so that's great but then you know once you install FSX then what then you have to go and install service pack one then you have to go and install service pack two then you have to get to your tweaking with FSX Steam Edition none of that's necessary you literally click a button and depending on how fast your internet connection is you click a button um, and you uh, pretty much immediately get to install it right so my my internet connection is very fast I can install this thing in about seven to ten minutes flat I think we're getting a little bit hot on our ITT we're going back just a little bit I think that's what that beep was but um, you know I, I get her installed in about seven to ten minutes and I'm on my way no more tweaks needed after that um, you know I I'm ready to hit the play button and you know the latest sim connects in there and you know life is great um, it's a completely dynamically updated um, platform no service pack installs no CD installs no CD key um, 
entering none of that stuff it's just a kind of one click literally a one click solution um, and you're ready to start simming so now that we're uh, out of KPSP I'm gonna look out here um, and you can see how beautifully soft clouds is I'm sorry how beautifully soft clouds are um, there's uh, the mountains down below the Banning Pass getting this kind of weird line effect um, which I'm assuming is like some sort of a fog horizon so we're going to descend back down to 10,000 and see if we can get rid of that I'm not really sure what that is but um, you know these soft clouds are absolutely yeah there you go so it went away now oh I guess it was a line created by that cloud we're flying right in the middle of but uh, these soft clouds are absolutely gorgeous man look at that I mean it may not be P3D volumetric but it's a happy medium um, absolutely beautiful beautiful cloud set crazy gorgeous anyways alright and you can see the planes kinda of yawing around from the turbulence alright so um uh, reason number five as we continue on down here is um, you know I think that this is one of the biggest parts of uh, why Steam Edition is um, better than regular FSX is that it's bringing in so many new players so right now if you wanted to buy a copy of Microsoft Box I don't even know where you would get it from to be honest with you I guess you can get it off of eBay and sometimes those are pirated copies or they're fake copies or um, they are you know ridiculously overpriced but you know for those new players that want to uh, low fuel warning but it's okay we got more than enough fuel to make our destination um, for those new players you know who are there on Steam and they're playing Counter-Strike or they're playing other simulators or they're doing whatever you know they now have a way of accessing this great game where you can't find it on store shelves you can't find it in retail outlets there's no really no other way of getting this game if you wanted it there's no digital download for FSX so you have to go fi find a second hand um, box edition which is next to impossible you know and then you have to go track down these service packs that are really hard to find nowadays I mean I guess there are some some, some Microsoft sites that are still up or you may be able to find service packs through um, you know third-party uh, uh, repositories but um, you know it, it's 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 really hard to get your hands on a copy of FSX nowadays unless you have your old CDs um, Steam gives it to the masses it puts it on the largest um, game distribution platform there is and makes it available to so many more folks and um, you know when you think about that that really is a kind of a double-edged sword in that not only is it great for the players that would like to start using FSX but also it's a good thing for the devs um, you know just the other day on Air Daily X um, which is a great website by the way if you guys don't go to air daily x dot I think it's net right um, you guys definitely should outstanding website by a guy named DeAndre um, just a wonderful resource I go here pretty much every day um, you know you look at uh, look at this there's a uh, a posting where he's talking about uh, Imagine Sim and IDS Studios are looking for new developers, are looking for new independent developers um, and uh, you know modelers to build new airports from that for them or building aircraft, etc. Now you think about that. It's you know it, it, every now and then there are developers out there who are looking for new talent, but think about that. Imagine the demand that's now happening for. Um, uh, FSX developers. Now there's all these new people. I mean, just the other day, um, the CEO of Orbix um, made a statement on Absim where he was saying that he's that they are seeing incremental growth um, in their business and the sales of their product because you know there's so many new people that are now simming um, that you know find out and go use Google or whatever and they find out about their product and uh, you know now they're coming to um, Orbis's website and purchasing their products or going to uh, you know um, uh, uh, flight sim whatever you call that website that uh, you have to buy Orbix through um, so it's creating better business for our developers and that's obviously a good thing because that means that they um, hire more developers right they hire more modelers they hire um, new staff they bring on new folks which means we get more airports released usually that would also mean that the airports get released faster because they're not so much um, you know having to use up their resources on one single project they have more people they can do more projects at one time and we get higher quality add-ons so you know it's a great thing not only for the economics of the flight simulator community 
but um, also for uh, you know the ecosystem of the flight simulator community. You know, we're bringing in new players, we're bringing in new business, and it's great for everybody. Um, the next point is actually multiplayer. So multiplayer is back now. This is not uh, you know. Um, this is not uh, by any means professional multiplayer, right? If you're expecting it to be um, something like uh, um, that sim type stuff, it's not. It's it's a fun multiplayer environment. It's cool for people to want to go on and play with their friends and joke around and be kind of stupid or whatever. Um, but uh, you know, it's still there, and we have not had a solid multiplayer platform in quite some time. Um, and you know you'd have to go through these weird ports after the game spy service went down um, dovetail has completely uh, brought back multiplayer for FSX and it's great not only for those of us who are looking to have casual fun but great for those um, who want to do cool things like shared cockpit the other day I did a shared cockpit with uh, with um, one of my aircraft uh, with a friend and we were flying around and having fun and um, although you can't do it with all aircraft especially not the more complex ones like PMDG um, you can do it with less complex aircraft some level D's you can actually do it with some real air aircraft as well um, shared cockpit is an absolute joy great way of hanging out with your friends spending time and doing cool stuff now speaking of multiplayer and uh, the general steam ecosystem altogether you know the next reason that um, FSX Steam Edition is better, is that it's giving you uh, the Steam Overlay, which the Steam Overlay is absolutely awesome. So in this, for those of you who are not familiar, you have access to the Steam community, right? So this would be like the forums for all your games, but in this case, you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator X Steam Edition, because that's what we're playing. Where you can see there's all kinds of discussions going on. Um, it gives you access to communicate with your friends who are playing games. So, you know, whatever game they're playing, whether they're playing um, a game that you're playing or um, whether they're playing another game. And if they are playing a Microsoft Flight Simulator X Steam Edition and you wanted them to join it, you wanted them to join in on your fun, you can invite them to your game um, or you can invite them to, you know, your multiplayer session or whatever it may be. So the Steam overlay is absolutely great. You can also play music if you'd like. Um, you know, that. Um, and you can access your entire uh, your entire music library on your computer. And last but not least is the fact that you have a full blown web browser. Earlier, you guys saw me watching YouTube. It, it can have Flash enabled. Um, actually, right now, since we're going to KSNA, I'm going to look up the approach chart for KSNA. Uh, so actually, let's do that while we're here. We use Flight Aware, and we're going to be doing the two zero right. So. Uh, our localizer is 111.75. It may be hard to see that um, in the recording, but 111.75 and our approach course is 196. Go around altitude, is, or I'm sorry, uh, missed approach is 3,000 feet, and our approach altitude is 3,500. So actually, let's uh, let's go ahead and plug that in now. So 111.75, just so we can uh, continue to fly here. And obviously, these are clearly VFR conditions, so we're going to have to use our ILS. Uh, cool. And then course is uh, uh what was it course was 196 approach course all right 196 and I'll fine tune that with uh, my side tech panel let's see 196 cool all right um so you know you can look at your approach charts here you can and actually we'll probably start descent now as well so let me pull back the power just a tad bit and if you actually look I have if you look down here at my autopilot um, I still have complete control of my simulator even though I'm here in an approach chart um, you know you still have full control of your yoke of your side tech panels uh, 3500 right you still have control of your throttles um, you know everything that basically would not uh, require a mouse click um, you still have full control so you can fly um, you know relatively easily in the background while you're here in your um, in your steam overlay which is absolutely great um, your simulator is still completely functioning in the background uh, can you move this around as well so the steam overlay is absolutely awesome it's like having an EFB right there at your fingertips um, a social outlet you can watch YouTube videos while you're flying whatever you want to do um, while you still can have uh, let's say like that sim going on in the background or listening to air traffic control or whatever you need to do um, so it's great steam overlay is a great great enhancement and you don't have to leave full screen mode you don't have to leave your simulator you can still see everything um, it's it's just a godsend um, and then um, so reason number I believe we're on seven now 
I'm sorry, we're on number uh, eight. So reason eight is coincidentally the fact that it is Windows 8 compatible. So for the first time, um, you know, Flight Simulator X is compatible with uh, with with Windows 8. So far, if you use Windows 8 and Flight Simulator X, it would be an absolute and complete nightmare. Um, you'd have all kinds of compatibility issues. Joysticks drop. The, the simulator crashes. Um, it would want to revert to um, uh, non arrow mode or whatever back to compatibility mode and you would lose some of the visual functionality of your of your desktop it just did not play nice with windows 8 and of course if it doesn't play nice with windows 8 and we all know microsoft is no longer supporting this platform then you know it would also not work well with windows 10 it's not like microsoft is going to sit there and program windows 10 to be compatible with fsx so now that we have dovetail programming for us they've made it fully windows 8 compatible and um uh, of course, Dovetail will aspire to uh, make it Windows 10 compatible as well as Windows 10 rolls out. You know, I love Windows 7. I've been using Windows 7 forever. I know some folks out there that love Windows XP and have been using Windows XP for quite some time. But we can't use Windows 7 and we can't use Windows XP forever, right? There will be a point where we will have to uh, we'll have to get off of those platforms. And you know, it's great to know that Dovetail is providing us with um, the updates that we need to. Uh, make our simulator compatible with um, with future platforms so it's Windows 8 compatible Windows 10 compatible which FSX is not right now and there's nothing you can do about it um, the next thing I would say that's more uh, that that makes FSX Steam Edition better is that it runs an extremely efficient code so like I said it's now on uh, VS 2013 so um, I think the last update that came out for Microsoft Flight Simulator X well I know it was Service Pack 2 but I think it was in 2009 or something like that 2008 maybe is when that patch came out I can't really remember um, but uh, you know after that update you saw a ton of compatibility issues or a ton of various issues that were apparent in um, F in uh, service pack one get fixed and uh, they did do some minor changes to the VS compiler um, and the VS compiler right now for regular Microsoft flight simulator um, is uh, I want to say VS 2000 I think it is VS 2008 I'm not 100% sure anyways it's some ungodly old um, Visual Studio compiler which makes um, the code very inefficient and limits some developers ability to efficiently code or program for this platform um, along with uh, makes uh, making enhancements for dovetail very very difficult as well now that we're on vs 2013 um, even pete dawson for those of you guys who don't know he's the guy who created fsu ipc he has he has uh, been ranting and raving and talking about how great um, the new code on uh, fsx steam edition is it, it is it is truly truly great code i'm no programmer i'm not all up in that code you know looking for places to hook stuff but um you know if pete dawson says it i'll take his word for it considering he's probably the the single uh, most important developer um, in the fsx community right now um and uh last but not least so reason number 10 is vast and out of memory so as we come up here um to uh um ksna oh my god look at those soft clouds dear lord holy smokes god i love those things um so as we come up here to ksna you know you got to think about the fact that our sliders are completely maxed out we are now coming up on our third mega airport, or our third very highly detailed airport. So we left 29 Palms, we went to um, KPSP, and now we're coming up on KSNA. You know, none of those things are vast slouches. Um, you would be hard pressed to make it even in between two of those airports with relatively moderate settings. Nonetheless, make it between all three of those airports with completely maxed out FSX, at least maxed out in terms of things that affect VAS. Um, then you have this crazy cloud coverage up above, which would also add to the vast would probably break your simulator. Then you have um, uh, FTX Global and Vector running down below on top of those custom. Oh crap! You see that lightning bolt? Holy smokes! Um, uh, you have uh, Vector and you have um, Global running down below, uh, and I think we're about to start our approach here. So we get us on in. We're gonna start our descent on down. Uh, try to capture the glide slope here. So we'll 
pull back the throttle. Um, so, you know, all these things amount to what would normally cause a massive OOM. Um, there's no way that regular FSX would be able to handle um, this kind of memory. Um, but because of the enhancements that Dovetail has made to the FSX um, code or to FSX Theme Edition, you know, no matter what tweaks you used in the past, right? You could use all the little mega tweaks that are out there, you know, your fiber frame stuff and all that, and you would still not be able to get um, rid of uh, out of memory. So it was just something that we have learned to live with as simmers, and we've learned to tweak our um, our uh, configurations and turn down um, eye candy and such uh, just to prevent an out of memory error and losing our flight and having our flight crash on us and everybody who's been doing this for a while and uses high quality scenery knows about the dreaded ping ping that happens when your computer's dying you know that's not happening here this thing is ridiculously efficient in vast management you guys can see that in some of my other videos ridiculously efficient in terms of vast management, ridiculously efficient in terms of um, uh, out of memory errors, and I'll tell you that since I've been using this thing with all the mega airports that I use, I am yet to get an out of memory error. So it is, um, it's an absolute joy to fly. The stability is second to none, and it's nothing that um, you know, you'd be able to get in regular FSX. Um, you know, should it be that uh, that you wanted to fly between mega airports and you wanted to use high quality add-on scenery, you know, you just have to accept out of memories or you have to turn on the eye candy. There is no compromise here with FSX Steam Edition. You put the settings where you want them to be, you make the tweaks that you want. If you want to make those tweaks, I personally have not had to make any tweaks in my settings, and you fly. You don't have to worry about turning off airports or, you know, unselecting airports or thinking about, oh my god, am I going to get an out of memory error, right? Should I turn down my settings? some more it's just uh you just get in your plane and you fly and you enjoy it and you have fun and there's there, there's just no more um doom and gloom about oh my god i'm gonna get an out of memory error so that is my number one reason without a doubt you know even if it didn't run smoother even if the compiler wasn't more efficient even if there wasn't multiplayer even if all that other stuff i can guarantee you um that everybody would want to buy a program that was uh, you know, claiming to eliminate your out of memory errors by, you know, at least 60, 70, 80 um, percent. And FSX Theme Edition does that. I'm a guy who used to be played by out of memory errors. As I said, I fly a lot of flights with my virtual airline, and I um, did a lot of uh, I did a lot of um, long distance flying. And you know, I've had more out of memory errors than I ever would wish to recount. But um, FSX Theme Edition, I'm yet to have one. So that's my list. Those are my 10 reasons why I believe FSX Steam Edition is indeed better. Um, and uh, hopefully you guys agree. If not, that's fine. Tell me why. Leave some messages in the comments. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and land this bird. Autopilot's off. And we've got a nasty crosswind. And I'm slightly low. This crosswind's nasty. Throw into beta. Alright guys and gals, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I look forward to seeing you all very soon when uh, when PMDG releases their new installer for the 777, which will probably do a flight from, let's say, KLAX on over to uh, um, Honolulu or something like that. We'll see where we decide to go. But um, I will see you guys all then. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. Um, Leave me a comment if you have anything to say about my top 10 or if you have some other ones that you think makes FSS Steam Edition better or if you think I'm a complete idiot, tell me that as well. Um, so hope everybody enjoys their weekend and uh, I'll catch you guys later.